guys. The Bench Buddies are back with our NBA second round power rankings. We're going to be ranking the eight teams that moved on to the second round. Not really any too big of surprises this this rankings, you know. Um, what was it? I believe all of the seven out of the eight higher seeds moved on. And all eight. Gonna, yeah. Oh, actually, yeah, all eight um, moved on. So nothing really too spectacular or exciting um, in our rankings here. But we are going to go in here. And, Ty, why don't you start here with the Sixers at eight? Yeah, uh, obvious reasons for putting them at eight. It's not because they're the eighth best team. It's because without Embiid, they have, you know, probably the worst roster out of all the teams. And obviously Embiid is everything for the Sixers. Harden is not what he once was. Uh, so now you're relying on Harden, uh, similar to how Houston did, but he's not that guy anymore. Everyone knows that. So this team is just really inconsistent outside of Embiid. So now you take him out of the equation. And I think it's pretty, it's pretty obvious that you got to put them here at eight. Uh, but if they get Embiid back at some point, maybe stay in the series up until then, who knows what could happen. And here at seven, we got the Dallas Mavericks. Both you and I written them off. Um, not making it this far. We both had the Jazz moving on. But they beat them in six. And you can thank Jalen Brunson and Spencer Dinwiddie for that. I know that Luka, you know, came back and essentially clinched it. When he was gone, those first, what, four games, um, Jalen Brunson and Spencer Dinwiddie actually absolutely took over. It's in some cases what Brunson dropped almost 40 one game. Uh, I mean, they really picked up the slack for Luca, and it's just something that they don't really have to worry about um, the Mavericks now, you know, when Luca can't play is they have those guys. But I think the biggest question for this team um, isn't really, you know, the playoffs this year. It's what they're going to do in the off season because Brunson probably is going to want his bag, you know, Dinwiddie, I believe he's a free agent this summer. He's going to want some money. So it's going to be tough to see what the Mavericks are going to do here. But for this postseason, you got to give them credit. Finally won their first playoff series, and it feels like ages. And you can thank Luca for finally getting them there. All right, we got the Heat at six. You know, another team that would probably be higher if they weren't dealing with injury concerns. Uh, Kyle Lowry and Jimmy Butler missed game five against the Hawks. Obviously, they still won the game, but... Uh, you got to get those guys back and healthy going forward if they're going to make a run to the finals. But uh, obviously they have a much easier path now with Joel Embiid out. And, you know, I think the Bucs match up really well with the Heat, but now they have Middleton out. So teams are dropping and the Heat seem like they're going to be getting their guys back. So if that is the case, they have a pretty solid path Uh to get to the NBA Finals. Obviously, it runs through Miami in the East. So they're ranked six, but they still have a pretty solid chance to win the East. At five, dropping, the biggest drop in our rankings is the Memphis Grizzlies. And I think it's with good reason. You know, they still beat the Timberwolves at six, but all these games were close games besides the one blowout in Minnesota for game three. You know, as you can see there, they came back from double digit deficits three separate times to win three of their four games. And of course, those games were the ones where, where they didn't blow them out. And you just don't know what team you're going to get from Memphis. I know they play hard every night and it's a good show. You know, Jaws out there doing pretty much yoga, essentially, with some of his moves because it just looks like it's impossible to do. But somehow he, he does it. And after that, I think that's where the big question mark is. The big men, they need to step it up a little bit. I know Jaron Jackson has been playing better. But after that, who who's the next big man on that team that is reliable? Really nobody. And I think that's a big question mark for them, you know, having to face the three seed Golden State Warriors. You know, they don't really have a better big man, I would say, but they have more consistent big men. And that's why it's an unfavorable matchup. And now you have to guard Steph Curry, Jordan Poole, and Klay Thompson. So very tough assignment for this Grizzlies team. All right, we got the Warriors at number four just dominated the Nuggets who were undermanned, but they they look like, to me, the team to beat in the West right now. I know the Suns have been the team all year, but I just think the Warriors are really peaking at the right time. Obviously, they've been there before. you got to factor that in. So uh, Steph Curry, pretty much back to 100%. Uh, he should be a full-time starter now as he was coming off the bench a few times in their first series, but he should be back in the starting lineup. And then 
when you have Jordan Poole as your sixth man, obviously he's been tearing it up uh, in these playoffs. So this team just has everything going right now. And if they continue to shoot like they have been, and there's not really a reason to think that they won't, uh, they definitely could win the whole thing, not just the West, because we've seen them do it before. And, you know, now they have a Jordan Poole sprinkled in there that they haven't always had in the past. At three, we get the Milwaukee Bucks. You know, we you said it. Essentially, the Bucks match up well with the Heat, but Middleton is out for the series, at least this series. We don't know if he could return for the conference finals. It's a big question mark right now, his health. But they scraped by the Bulls. I mean, it wasn't really a challenge there. As half of their team was hurt. And I think what everyone's going to match up is this is Giannis versus the Celtics. Because we know Tatum and Brown are going to do their thing. But Giannis is going to have to put up around 40 points if they want to win, at least every night. Um, he's going to have to average pretty much a triple-double like LeBron numbers when he took the Cavs, the bummy Cavs, to the finals that one year. Giannis is going to have to do that right now. I mean, he got that help from Grayson Allen in game five, but he's not going to get help like that every game. And so he's going to have to take over in most parts. But give credit to the Bucks. Everyone wrote him off even before the playoffs have started because, you know, everyone likes the number one seed, number two seeds. But the Bucks here are sitting at three, looking, you know, questionable. But if they can get past this really hot Celtics team, there's no doubt in my mind that they can go into the finals. All right. Speaking of those Celtics, we got them at number two, and it's now or never for them. They have tried with these pieces they have right now, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. Obviously, they had Kyrie a few years ago. They've tried all these new pieces. This has to be the year that it has to work, similar to the 76ers. Uh, they've been waiting for too long. Now Tatum and Brown are both in their primes, I would say. Uh, so it's it's time for them. And now you got Middleton out uh, for the Bucks. You got Embiid injured for the Sixers. The Heat are dealing with uh, injury concerns in the Celtics. The only injury news for them is that they got Robert Williams back. They haven't had anyone go down. So uh, they're the healthiest team in the East, and they're probably playing the best of any team in the East right now. Uh, but they have to win this series against Milwaukee. Otherwise, uh, there's going to be talks about splitting up Brown and Tatum. Uh, going forward but I really like the Celtics obviously being healthy matters a lot we saw that last year in the playoffs so they have that going for them and obviously Tatum has been tearing it up uh, not only in the playoffs but to end the regular season so watch out for the Celtics they could definitely win the East now it's starting to fall their way at one staying at one we got the Phoenix Suns they beat the Pelicans in six but that series got dragged out because Booker didn't play a few games um, but, you know, it is something to monitor his health going into this series <clears throat> against uh, the Mavericks. I think they're going to struggle a game. Um, you know, five, six games is probably the ceiling, I would say, or the floor for them, um, you know, winning the series. But right now, Michael Bridges, Chris Paul, DeAndre Ayton, and then you throw Booker in there, really healthy. I mean, there's still the team to beat here in the West. I know the hot pick right now is the Warriors because of what they did to the Nuggets. But that Nuggets team has absolutely no defense. The only reason they get there every year is because of Jokic. Um, and they had a matchup against the Warriors. And once we saw, got blown out. So you got to give the Suns credit here for winning 64 games. It's pretty, it's uncommon now, especially today in today's NBA to win 60 or more. Um, as you saw the East, you know, beat up on each other's where the Suns this year really took advantage of some injuries early in the year and rode with it. But the Suns, I think you can't bet against them. This is their year. They went last year, you know, weren't supposed to get there last year. And now Chris Paul, what, what's he going to do? I think he wants to stay here, maybe retire here as a son. Um, but if they, if they win a title this year, you know, that for sure is probably going to happen. But that's going to be it for the video today. Hit that subscribe button down below. Um, you know, get us to 500. We're doing a bigger giveaway than the one we did before. But until the next time, the Bench Buddies are out. She never called back.